Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the Dieter Melhorn Fishing Podcast. I hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to the show. Got something today that is, uh, well, it's kind of bad news. It's hopeful for some good news, but it's something I think any of us that are boaters can learn from. And uh, it's something that's going on in the news. You may have seen or heard about it. There was a boater that was overdue to return back. And um, the thing that got my interest in this is that he's local. As a matter of fact, I was fishing in Lake Wiley right near his house this afternoon. And I had kind of loosely followed what was going on here. But he went out fishing out of eastern North Carolina down toward uh, the Wilmington area. That's probably the biggest city uh, in that area that people will recognize. And uh, he turned up missing. And uh, I started reading about the story this morning and what was going on with it. And at that time, uh, what the facts were was that he left on Saturday, uh, which is fairly important. And he left late in the day, which struck me really odd that he was leaving as late as he was. It was like three to four o'clock and uh to me it seemed like awful late in the day to be going offshore fishing the other thing was he was going out alone and uh there was a you know he was overdue and uh, was supposed to be back coast guard was notified a search ensued that went on sunday and monday and uh the reason i found out about everything that was going on like i said i briefly heard about it but I saw this morning in one of the news feeds that the search had been called off. Uh, the Coast Guard decided that the boat could not be found. They said they searched a very, very large area. I want to say the size of Massachusetts or something. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty big area. Looking for the vessel. Could not find it. So they called off the search this morning, Tuesday morning. And... Uh, I started digging into it, started looking into it, started asking some people about this boat, which is a 32-foot Cape Horn with twin Suzuki motors on it. A very capable, very seaworthy boat. And the guy who was running the boat, a good fisherman, very capable fisherman. He's not just some guy that bought a boat and decided he was going to run out into the Atlantic Ocean. He knew what he was doing. He was good at what he did. Uh, the one thing was, though, he did go out alone. And uh, that, you know, I do it myself. I fish locally on lakes all the time by myself. And uh, while it's not necessarily the smartest thing in the world, uh, you know, we do it. A lot of us do it. And uh, But he was fishing in the ocean. And the other thing was, this was on a day when the winds were up and offshore seas were significant. I spoke to some people down there uh, that believe on that day it was in the five to seven foot range. Again, this boat, a 32 foot Cape Horn, is more than capable of operating in those conditions. While they may not be comfortable, may not be enjoyable, uh, the, the boat with a, a, a worthy captain like this guy was uh, will, will operate in it. Now, the what transpired <clears throat> later in the day, and it's why I'm releasing this podcast and video as late as I am, was that I started getting some text messages from some of the people I reached out to asking about this, um, as and they said that they had found the boat today. So, uh, big chains of events. You know, they call off the Coast Guard search, they find the boat, and you know, then I was trying to figure out what exactly condition the boat was in was this thing flipped over did it capsize you know and what i've heard and again there's none of this has been confirmed uh except through people who were there uh and there's been no press releases from the coast guard or the police department on this is that the boat motors were running which kind of shocked me but when i explain in a second why I think that's probably possible and, could, and and likely that they were. Uh, rods were in the gunnels in place like they were getting ready to fish. And apparently one of the outriggers had been deployed and the other one hadn't. So that's kind of the, the, the shape that everything was in. Now, 
Originally, he was going to an area that several people have told me was 40, anywhere from 40 to 45 miles offshore. He had left the float plan, which was smart, as to where he was going to and where he was fishing. And apparently the boat was found about 80 miles offshore. So this does make sense. Now, you, obviously, there's drift, there's currents that can move a boat. But if the motor is engaged, which... It may well have been with the style of fishing. He was trolling, and, you know, a lot of times when you're deploying this bait, these baits, which it appears he may have been doing, uh, you've got the motor in gear so that you're pulling in line so your baits aren't dropping straight down under the boat into a big tangled mess. Um, but no sign of him. So that's kind of where it's at now. The Coast Guard has started the search over because hopefully... Hopefully, we're all hoping and praying for the family that he was wearing a life jacket and he has some type of flotation device. And, you know, if he was deploying an outrigger, gaffing a fish, whatever the case may be, that if he did fall overboard, uh, he's sitting out there floating. Now, uh, what a horrific thing to have to endure to fall out of a boat and slowly see your boat pull away from you. Um, and but there's a good chance i mean there's a chance he could be alive if he had on a life jacket uh some type of flotation device so uh it was a well-equipped boat too so it, there's no real signs of distress in this uh he has epurbs on the boat he has vhf radios he had a sat phone these are all accounts of the family and state-of-the-art electronics so again <clears throat> this does not appear like something that just you know, somebody that was out there that was not prepared for this situation. It looks like something unexpected happened and he went into the water. Again, that's my opinion. Uh, a lot of the people that have uh, seen the condition of the boat, a boat appeared to be in good shape. It looks like he went into the water. So where are we now? The Coast Guard has resumed the search. And hopefully, hopefully they can get on the boat, look in the electronics, and basically see the path that the boat took to get there and could literally follow that path back. Now, winds and currents can change where somebody floating would go, uh, but it could give you an idea possibly of where their starting point is because that's the thing in these searches if they know a starting point, they can from there figure out with the currents and the winds and everything as to which way a boat will float, will drift, or a person will float or drift. So, uh, a, 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 you know, another one of these tragic situations uh, maybe could have been avoided. Uh, you know, obviously going offshore like that is a big risk. It's a big gamble when you go alone. And, um, I'm not the most well-versed offshore captain by any means, but I can tell you this, uh, after my trip to Venice, Louisiana a couple of weeks ago when we were out in some five-foot seas, uh, doing that alone, I actually thought about that out there. And we had a whole crew of people, mates and anglers, and I was sitting there thinking, man, to be out here doing this alone, because I've read accounts of people out there fishing in those kind of conditions, um, it would be harrowing. Uh, it, it, it would be a scary situation, especially trying to deal with the boat in gear while you're deploying lines, getting lines out, multiple rods out. Then if you hook a fish, you're dealing with fighting this fish. And depending on what the conditions are, getting rocked and slammed around. Now, obviously, somebody who's seasoned at it does way better on a boat than I do. But still, it's just a, uh, it, it's, it's, it, it's not great conditions to go out into. And all the captains I talk to, they all said similar tales of, I've done the same thing. You, you, you get hungry to get out there and fish. Uh, you've got a chance, time off to go fish. And you know, every one of them has said, I've done it. I've run out there before. I, I had a day off and I was going to get to fish for a while. And, you know, I ran offshore and did it. And, you know, a lot of them are like, you know, there, but for the grace of God, go I. And, so, you know, that's, you know, what we can take away from this, you guys that do offshore fishing and stuff, uh, you know, as much as we say it and preach it, wear a life jacket, wear something if you're going to go out there by yourself. Ideally, don't go out by yourself, but uh, if you're going to be out there, um, you know, have a life jacket on. And, it, you know, if you got an EPIRB, a handheld EPIRB, uh, it's funny, when I did the trip down in Venice, Louisiana, again, 
We're on a very large boat, a 42-foot Freeman, very capable boat in those conditions. I had my handheld EPIRB in my pocket if for whatever reason I went in the water, something happened with the boat, you know, something catastrophic happened. Uh, have something like that on you so that it will automatically send a signal when you're not able to. So it's a tragic situation. Pray for the family, pray for the searchers, pray for everybody that is out there looking. The boat was actually found by a bystander, a, a good Samaritan fishing out fisherman came up on that boat today and uh, was, you know, at least able to give some hope that this man can be found. And uh, it's possible there was a... Uh, uh, a story I looked up from a couple of years ago where a guy had fallen out of a boat and some people came up on the boat. It was still running and they basically ran back the course and found the guy in the water. I believe he did have on a life jacket in that situation, but tragic situations. Just wanted to kind of bring you all up to date on what I discovered and all that. But I find these stories, they always intrigue me. Uh, it's the these tragic situations because I try to learn from them. Uh, you know, I did one last year on... The, uh, it's been about a year ago, the guy that was killed in the catfish tournament. And uh, I, I try to learn from these things. I try to take out little nuggets uh, of something and try to pass them on to you guys so that hopefully, you know, you can do the same and just give you something to think about. Because the more educated you are on this kind of stuff, the better off you are. Uh, sometimes things happen, though, and it's beyond your control. Uh, I saw something posted that he possibly had a heart condition. Who knows? He could have had a cardiac episode or something. Now, there's a lot of things that can go wrong out there. Uh, a lot of things that can happen, uh, you know, and it could be something totally unexpected that renders you, you know, off balance, unconscious. You go overboard. And that's why having multiple people out there with you definitely helps. It at least makes, you know, uh, it increases your odds of getting out of their lives. So prayers and thoughts to the family. Like I said, they're local. Uh, that's a thing that struck a chord with me. I probably passed this guy on the water. As a matter of fact, I seen a large twin engine out there last year during the summer. And I said, he must keep the boat at the coast. And it's just out here running and to get the engines in shape. So uh, who knows? I hope they find them. That would be one heck of a story. Uh, if, uh, if that happens, that would be great to, to see it happen. So that's it for now, guys. Appreciate you watching. We'll catch you out on the water.